Good morning, everybody. All right. Well, thank you all for being here. This is, of course, an exciting week in San Francisco. And uh, thank you, Lou. How are you doing? All right. Good to see you. We, uh, there he is. How are you, sir? Good to see you. <laughs> well, these are, of course, our great symbols for our Giants and our 49ers and uh, America's Cup, Fleet Week. We have so many events that are going on, and what we wanted to do was partly to show off how great of a city of San Francisco is and to thank everybody for honoring our city with so many wonderful, successful events. And having said that, uh, we are up to this challenge. Uh, we don't want to be a victim of our success. We actually want to make sure that we continue celebrating in the best San Francisco way. And that's why I have assembled all of our departments who are working on the ground 24-7 to make sure that we do it right and to make sure the public and the visitors are safe and the city continues all of its success. We have, uh, uh, this weekend, America's Cup that is here, Fleet Week, uh, honoring our uh, military, men and women in uniform. Uh, the America's Cup, we've been planning this for some years, and we are grateful to Larry Ellison for choosing San Francisco and allowing us to have these races. And as you know, the uh, World Series that was held a couple months ago, uh, was very successful. We know it's going to be even more successful this year. Added on with uh, all of the ships that will be parading through the Bay Harbor, the Blue Angels, uh, the landing of the amphibious hydrofoil in Ocean Beach to demonstrate uh, our commitment to neighborhoods. Uh, this is extremely exciting. We have 49ers playing Buffalo Bills, right, this Sunday. And we're just getting details of our San Francisco Giants in the playoffs again. Yes. And if you were here last night, and if you saw the news, and, and I watched it very carefully, they've already, and we have already lit up orange on City Hall and Coit Tower. It's orange month, playoff month in San Francisco. We also have Hardly Strictly Bluegrass, three days of concerts at Golden Gate Park. And of course, that's where Phil Ginsburg, and, and it's an honor again. And I would remind everybody how uh, wonderful we feel about Warren Hellman and his contributions to our city. Uh, and the Hardly Strictly Bluegrass was uh, his concert. Not, it's our concert. And we're going to have a lot of great celebrations there. We have the Castro Street Fair that's going on in our neighborhoods. That's going to draw thousands of people here as well. We have the Italian Heritage Parade. Yes, in North Beach. I'll be there on Sunday, and so will Lucille will be there as well. Great. You're going to all be there. And we have uh, so many other things to celebrate in the city, but these are uh, all of the major events that we're hosting in our city. And I want to make sure that you know uh, we have departments that have been working uh, around the clock to make sure these things are managed well. Uh, but the actual sponsors of the team, whether it's Larry Bear or Jed York or Stephen Barkley from America's Cup or the others, they've all been engaged with each and every one of our departments from SFMTA to Public Works to uh, deep, uh, from uh, our DEM, our Department of Emergency Management, Recreation and Park Department, our Sheriff's Department, all of them have been engaged to make sure that our public and our visitors are safe. And so, first up, uh, to hear how our city is ready, uh, how we are going to be uh, handling the crowds that come here uh, from uh, just a city that has used to these crowds. Uh, we have been used to them from events like the 75th anniversary of our Golden Gate Bridge that was held earlier, to the America's Cup World Series, to uh, the open world uh, uh, oracle, the, uh, the open world uh, convention that is going on right now uh, with over 50,000 people uh, that are visiting our city. Uh, these are things that we've handled and we have had a good experience. Uh, so first up, 
and I know there's going to be a lot of concerns about traffic congestion and traffic getting around in the city, so I'm going to ask uh, Ed Riskin uh, to come on up and talk about the plans that we have, and of course he's going to be followed by Leah Sham, who's our ex executive director of our Bicycle Coalition, because we want people to be as green as possible and get around uh, in a comfortable way and not just individuals in the individual cars. Come on up, Ed Riskin. Well, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Good morning, everyone. Um, what an exciting week and weekend for San Francisco. I can tell you as a San Franciscan, uh, it's so thrilling uh, to think of all of this excitement that's going to converge on our city. And as the transportation director, this is like the World Series of Transportation for us, or, or the Super Bowl. And I, 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 we look forward to seeing you guys in the World Series and you guys in the Super Bowl. But for us, it's this weekend. This is an incredible uh, array of events th that are all happening at the same time. And we're excited for it, and we're ready for it. Uh, we started work on this, um, as the mayor said, planning m more than a year ago when we started the development of the People Plan, which is the transportation plan for the America's Cup. I want to acknowledge Peter Albert, the architect of the People Plan. And that plan has been the basis from which we have now leveraged, uh, expanded upon, and improved uh, to deal with this confluence of events that are coming here this weekend. So our role as the transportation department is to make sure that people have good choices in terms of how to get to the city, how to get around the city, whether they're going to the events, which we know many, many hundreds of thousands, if not over a million people will, uh, but also for those San Franciscans who are just going about their daily lives while all this excitement is happening. Uh, we have a plan in place uh, using all of the modes of transportation to make sure that that can happen. So our job is putting that plan in place. Uh, your job is to leave your cars at home. We want everybody to come to San Francisco, but we don't want everybody to come in their cars. Uh, there are some people who really will need to use their cars, and we want to make sure uh, that they have access to the city. Um, but for the rest of you, we don't want you to be worrying about getting caught in traffic, uh, looking for parking spaces, having to deal with your car at all. We want to liberate you from your vehicles and let you avail yourselves of the great transportation options that we have here in the city um, and in the region. We've been working with our regional partners to enhance transit service. BART is going to be running longer trains. Um, Golden Gate Transit, bringing people in from Marin, is going to have extra buses. Caltrain will be adding more service for the Giants. Uh, we're coordinating with the ferries, the buses, the trains, everybody in the region. Here in San Francisco, in Muni, uh, we'll have our 47L service, a limited service, running this weekend to get people uh, really express from, from downtown, from Civic Center, up to the marina and back. Uh, we'll have a lot of extra service out on the Embarcadero, running extra F-line F shuttles, running the E-train, the E-line is the historic streetcars that are running from Fisherman's Wharf down to the ballpark. We're going to be putting extra light rail vehicles on for whenever the Giants games uh, are going to be happening. Go Giants! We'll have our regular uh, shuttles and express service for the 49ers game on Sunday. We'll have a five limited service serving the, the Richmond uh, to help folks get to and from the Hardly Strictly Bluegrass. We're putting extra taxis out on the street, uh, both authorizing spare taxis as well as the first of the additional taxis that were authorized by the MTA board uh, just a few weeks ago. Um, and we're partnering with other, uh, other transportation providers, and, and you're going to hear from, from one of them in a minute. So our job is to make all those modes of transportation available and make them effective, and also to provide information about them. So we've, we've developed a brochure that we have both in hard copy up on our website. We're using 511 to get information out. We're using, using social media. We will have signage, the big message signs. Uh, we'll have uh, smaller signs where we're running different service. We'll have dozens of ambassadors out on the streets helping people find the right mode of transportation. We'll have dozens of parking and traffic control officers, fare inspectors, street supervisors. We will have people out there to help people get to where they want to go and help them do so safely. And I just want to uh, end on that note before handing this off to Leah. Um, 
there's going to be hundreds of thousands, <clears throat> again, if not more than a million people converging on the city. Everybody's going to be eager to, to get to where they're going. They're going to be traveling in different directions. They're going to be using different modes of transportation. So we really want to take this opportunity to emphasize that we want people to be safe. We want people to be alert when they're out on the street. Crossing the street, looking down at your, at your smart, smartphone, no. Riding your bicycle with the earphones in, no. Behind the wheel, doing anything with any device, no. We need people to be uh, alert and aware. We want people to be safe. We want people to get around and enjoy themselves and not end up in the hospital, not end up hurt. Um, that, that's what's going to make this weekend fun and enjoyable for all of us. So we, we look forward to it. We, we welcome the challenge. We're happy to be able to play this role for San Francisco in making this week and weekend work. Um, and one of the ways that we're going to make it work um, is by getting, encouraging folks to use one of the most effective means of transportation there is in San Francisco. It's the, the cleanest, the, the greenest, the cheapest. Uh, we'll keep cars off the road, and, and that's bicycles. Um, so I, we're happy to have the executive director of the San Francisco Bicycle Coalition here, um, who, who not only has been a strong advocate for getting people out of their cars and onto bikes, but for making sure that all road users, including cyclists, as well as pedestrians and motorists, are operating safely in the public rights of way. So uh, we look forward to seeing everybody out there this week and this weekend, and I'm happy to bring up Leah Shayam to talk more about how we're encouraging bicycling. And as Leah's about to speak, I just want to make sure that uh, you know uh, there isn't a week that goes by without uh, President uh, David Chu from the Board of uh, Presidencies meeting in my office with me. And of course, he does not own a car. So he wants to make sure, too, that everybody does what Ed Riskin has advised. Uh, but he and I have been talking about all these events and how we're coordinating them. And certainly with the rest of the members of the Board of Supervisors, I know Supervisor Carmen Chu is here today, and they're great enthusiasts of these events. And we're all working together to make sure it happens with the Board and the Mayor's Office. Leah Shum. Thank you, Mayor. We want to look back on this weekend, not only with winning victories at the 49ers and the Giants, and an amazing concert in Golden Gate Park, amazing community street fairs, of course, a once-in-a-lifetime regatta out on the bay. We also want to look back and say, what a joy it was to move around our beautiful city. We do not want to have reports of traffic nightmares. We think we can avoid that. One of the jo most joyous ways to move around our city to these events, to whatever uh, happenings you're you're uh, visiting this weekend is going to be by bicycle. You may know that biking has increased in San Francisco in the last five years by 71%. On special days like Sunday streets and major events in Golden Gate Park and other places, we see that number go even higher. We, so we expect just an astronomical number of people to be living here and visiting here and moving around by bicycle. I want to thank the city for making that so much easier this weekend and to highlight for people that may not know, there are special bike routes to encourage people to bike this weekend to make it even more inviting, comfortable and safe. One of those is along the Embarcadero. It's really exciting. You can now, let's say, come in from the East Bay with your bicycle and get off on BART and remind people that you can bring your bikes on BART over the weekend and most times during the weekdays, you can bring your bike from the East Bay or elsewhere on BART, maybe bring it up from Caltrain, ride up, get on the Embarcadero, and ride on a beautiful new car-free path right along the waterfront. This is special for this weekend, for the events. Ride up to the northern waterfront and, and watch the America's Cup and enjoy Fleet Week. You can also get right off at the Giants game, roll right up to the Giants Stadium, AT&T Park, and, and park there. You can also bike right on out to uh, Hardly Strictly Bluegrass. At all of these locations, you can park your bike for free and securely. And I want to highlight that. We are going to have room for 10,000 bicycles in Golden Gate Park. We expect to need even more room, but at least 10,000 bikes will be parked out at Hardly Strictly Bluegrass this weekend. We have room for thousands and thousands at two sites for Fleet Week and uh, America's Cup, both the Marina Green and Aquatic Park. Please check 511.org for all the details of, of where these locations are. And then at Giant Stadium, hundreds of bikes will be parked. So we're really proud to be doing free, secure valet bike parking at all these locations. I want to encourage people to get out and try their bikes. Invite the family, invite the neighbors and uh, family in from around the Bay Area and join us on a bike. Thanks so much. Thank you, Leah. 
joining us in a official city family sigh of relief from critical mass is our deputy uh, 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 deputy uh, police department uh, officer Kevin Cashman who's going to explain how our city is going to continue being safe for everybody. Come on up, uh, Deputy Kevin Cashman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I'd like to begin by thanking a lot of people who are responsible for bringing together this very memorable weekend in San Francisco. Specifically, I'd like to begin with the mayor's office for all the support they've been in the planning process and the organizing process, but also all of our city partners at DEM and DPW, MTA, the fire department, Rec and Park, um, the sheriff's department. It's been a real uh, pleasure to plan this weekend with all the city partners. Uh, DEM played a key role in that. But most of all, I'd really like to take this moment to thank the men and women of the San Francisco Police Department. In preparation for this weekend, our officers sacrificed time off, they rescheduled a vacation, they rearranged training, uh, they agreed to work extended shifts. Uh, we are very grateful to them. Um, in order to reduce, uh, or I should say, uh, in order to reduce overtime uh, for this week's events, we are reassigning officers as needed while maintaining appropriate staffing levels in each of the 10 district police stations. Um, additionally, we've limited discretionary time off for this time period. We've reassigned officers from administrative and investigative assignments to be deployed on the street to assist with the events. Uh, we have problem-solving teams in place uh, in case there's any intangibles or span spontaneous events that occur. We'll be able to deploy people very quickly and rapidly to remedy the problem. Um, we're really looking forward to this weekend. And if there's one reoccurring theme here uh, you know, that we want to mention is please, please, we urge you to take public transportation. It'll make it so much easier for everyone. And the other thing is please remember your basic personal safety tips. Please be aware of your surroundings at all times, especially you know, in crowded areas and with electronic devices. Thank you very much. And I, I know our firefighters and our paramedics are standing by to provide uh, public safety and provide medical assistance to anybody that needs it. And here is our fire chief, John Hayes White, to tell you more about their preparations. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, Mayor Lee, on behalf of the San Francisco Fire Department, yes, I want to assure you that the men and women of the San Francisco Fire Department are ready and prepared to have an enjoyable, safe weekend of activities. Uh, we see the 49ers, we see the Giants. Uh, I'd like to say the mayor, under his leadership, has formed a pretty incredible team. And without the teamwork of all of the colleagues behind me, we wouldn't be feeling as good as we feel today because of all of the hours of preparation that we collectively put into it. I can say I've been doing this for about nine years, and this is unprecedented, the most collaborative, cooperative experience that I've seen and been a part of. So I think, uh, Mayor Lee, that's because of your, your excellent leadership and your engagement and involvement. Certainly, like Deputy Chief Cashman said, uh, the Department of Emergency Management is the single agency that coordinates us all. And we had a very productive meeting last week to cap off a series of meetings so that we are very well coordinated and very well planned. One thing I did want to mention is obviously make use of the 911 system if needed for emergencies, but also 311. We have Nancy Alfaro here. It's an excellent resource. 311 is geared up for all of the activities this week. Uh, you can call 311 and get non-emergency information about what's, what's happening in the city, or if you wanted to report something that wouldn't require a code 3 medical or fire or police response. Uh, as a native daughter of this city, I'm thrilled to be a part of it. And we definitely want our residents, as well as people from outside the city, to come in and enjoy and not be a little skeptical about all that's happening. Literally, there is something for everyone. We want you to enjoy it. We feel confident that this city is prepared to make this an enjoyable, safe, and fun experience. So let's have a great week. Go 49ers. Go Giants. Here's to our men and women in uniform that we're honoring with Fleet Week. And uh, even though you can tell probably by my background and my face red and the freckles, I will be part of that Italian Heritage Parade and looking forward to it. So thank you so much. Thank you, Chief. And as uh, Chief Hayes White said earlier, communications is the key to all these great events. Uh, standing behind me is Nancy Alfaro. She's been the director of 311 since I've been city administrator. And she's been closely working with every single department of the city and make sure they're aware of the traffic impacts, the muni reroutes, garbage cleanup, 
uh, even Muhammad Nuru is here. And while he's willing to pick up everything, we're going to keep reminding the public, pick it up yourself. Don't even put it out there. Right, Mo? Right. Yeah, absolutely. He doesn't want to work any harder than anybody else. Uh, but I want to thank him and his staff because I know how hard they worked having worked alongside them for so many years. Our Department of Emergency Management oversees the 911 system. Emergency dispatch, emergency operations and communications, they're the lifeblood of our city. We always have to be prepared. And so our DEM director, Ann Cronenberg, is here to tell you more about how we are preparing and also her great partnership with Fleet Week as well. Hello all, it's a pleasure to be here today. We have been preparing for this weekend literally since last January. We began meeting with all of our city colleague departments, with the federal government, with the state government, uh, National Park Service, and our nonprofit communities to make sure that this weekend is a safe and enjoyable weekend for everyone coming into San Francisco. We want people to come, we want people to have fun, we want people to be safe. We're activating our emergency operations center. In fact, as of today, we have a, it, it is activated. We have all of our, our um, coordinating agencies in there who will be working with us to make sure that everything goes smoothly this weekend. We use this opportunity to um, get better at what we do, much rather plan and exercise in fun events like this than in something that is a tragedy, but we learn from every single thing we do. So again, I encourage folks to come into the city to have fun, you know, go Giants, woohoo! We even, we even put that as part of our planning assumptions in January, that the Giants would be in the National League Series. So we had very positive thoughts going into this. Please come, please enjoy, and know that you are in safe hands. We have an invisible team to the public working behind the scenes. Hopefully it will be very smooth and transparent to all people who come in. So I thank my staff and all my colleagues for the hard work that they have put into planning this weekend. Thank you. Thank you, Ann. Well, we're also working closely with our state and federal partners, Caltrans, the United States Coast Guard, and the National Park Service, who've been working very closely with America's Cup and with Fleet Week and the Fleet Week organizers to provide a great and spectacular experience for all of our attendees. We've also been working very closely uh, for, with the federal and state leaders for greater funding of our emergency preparedness as well. So we're standing ready. So here's the fun part. Now we get to talk about the events themselves. Well, first up at bat is our 34th America's Cup. The city's been working hard on the America's Cup, uh, with the America's Cup Event Authority, America's Cup Organizing Committee, and I see Kerry McClellan here with Port Director Monique Moyer to make sure that our 34th America's Cup is a tremendous success for this year as well as for next year. Today we have America's Cup, the race management of Stephen Bark, represented by Stephen Barkley. I know Ian Murray's here as well, and they'll come up and talk about the upcoming World Series. And he's also joined by Artemis Racing CEO Paul Cairn. Come on up, Stephen. Good morning, everyone. Thanks very much for having us in San Francisco. Look at the weather out there. What a perfect place to be out on San Francisco Bay, the best sailing bay in the world, and Paul will attribute to that growing up here. Paul, how do you see next week? Well, next week's uh, going to be a fantastic week for sure for the sailing, and yeah, I'm a San Francisco native, and I can tell you that uh, San Francisco was born ready to host the America's Cup. The bay is the, God made the bay, which is the best stadium in the world for sailing, and God made the Inland Valley hot and the Pacific Ocean cold, so we got breeze every day, and God made mountains all over San Francisco, so we got grandstands naturally, so we're, we're ready to roll. So as Mayor Lee said, we had a practice with the America's Cup World Series here last month in August a great reception and turnout from the people of San Francisco to welcome our 11 boats from eight countries around the world as a prelude to the America's Cup next year. We've worked hard to come into this week and work with Fleet Week to provide 
a double spectacular on the Bay of San Francisco. We'll be out there racing Wednesday through to Sunday. Um, we'll be joining the air show on Sunday with our, our race uh, broadcast nationally across the country and uh, hopefully uh, putting a, a double entertainment out there for the people of San Francisco this weekend. We're going to have great racing. We've been joined by the youngest skipper in our America's Cup, a 21-year-old, fresh from the Olympics in London with a silver medal and uh, some great talent, bags full of gold and silver medals. And uh, we do have the best sailors in potentially the fastest boats. Look forward to seeing you there. Thank you. Thank you, Ian. This year's honorary co-chairs for Fleet Week are Senator Dianne Feinstein and former Secretary of State George Schultz. And they've been really at it with a fantastic public-private partnership to celebrate and honor our men and women in uniform, not only as they serve, but also as they continue a great public-private partnership to get our city continuously prepared for any disaster we might have. After all, the Fleet Week is a time we celebrate our city's rich naval history. Uh, as indicated earlier, we have the Blue Angels that are coming in. We've got the Parade of Ships. We've got so many things to celebrate and so many things to prepare for. And so this year, uh, I'd like to call up uh, for the Fleet Week 2012, representing Fleet Week this year, Charlotte Saltz, our Chief of Protocol, and of course, General Mike Myatt, who's been at it for many years, helping us have successful Fleet Weeks. Come on up, Charlotte and Mike. General Mike. Thank you. Thank you. Come on, General. Okay, Mayor, did you realize how much fun you were going to have as mayor? Huh? Forget all those other days. Um, okay, Fleet Week. Uh, I think, uh, General, this is the 31st year. And I remember that back then, uh, Diane Feinstein was mayor. Uh, she was working on a Saturday like you guys do, mayors. And I was up at our ranch uh, with all my family. It's California, so I was having lunch, drinking California wine. And Diane said, Charlotte, I want you to be uh, chairman of Fleet Week. And I said, well, what is Fleet Week? And she said, well, you know, the great white fleet came in with Teddy Roosevelt in 1908. And I said, Diane, I wasn't here. <laughs> and uh, so I said, what is Fleet Week? She said, well, all these ships come in, all these planes come in. There are sailors, there are marines, there are captains, there are generals, I mean, uh, admirals and captains. And I said, Diane, so many men, so little time. <laughs> and she said, Charlotte, this is serious. And I said, yes, this is serious. So uh, as a friend of mine says, when it's really fun, he says, this is gonna be serious fun. Uh, General Mayotte and uh, his co-chairmen, Diane and, and my secretary, have added a great deal, as the mayor said, to make this a, an event where people can learn some things. But from my perspective, it's a fun as usual. Uh, this year, uh, General, the, some of the ships come in early. Is that right? And what happens? People can go on them? Yes, we're going to have the uh, ships come into Pier 80 on Wednesday, and they, you'll be able to visit those ships on Thursday and Friday, and then they'll go out and participate in the parade of ships on Sunday. Okay, now what about the bands? There's the Marine Band and there's the Navy Band and they're gonna be all over town and in yeah. Oakland as well? well? They're gonna have a concert at uh, Jack London Square on Friday, a Navy Band. There's a Marine Band concert at uh, the Marine Maritime Academy in Vallejo. And there's band concerts at uh, Pier 39 and on Powell Street and at the Marines Memorial on Monday night. So it's a real happening and of course the big day is on Saturday and the ships come in, uh, the planes, the Blue Angels fly over, uh, and we celebrate uh, that wonderful day of, of giving honor to our military. So the streets, girls and boys, is gonna be full of men and women. So they're gonna be in uniform, and as usual, the hospitality in San Francisco is just known to be the best in the world. So I know that the best in the world will come out that day with the addition of all the other ad, uh, activities to give uh, great hospitality to our men and women in uniform, buy them a meal, buy them a drink if they look like they're over 12. And uh, so have a great day. So uh, go Giants, go uh, 49ers, the, the America's Cup. Uh, men and women, we love them. Thank you, Chief of Protocol Charlotte Schultz, General Mike. Uh, Larry Bear, 
You know, I used to have an orange hat until a couple of Saturdays ago when it was drenched in champagne. Very, very happily to have done that. Uh, it is exciting. Uh, we started last night, uh, Monday night actually, City Hall, Coit Tower became orange. The whole month of October is playoff month and we we're cheering you on to another World Series victory. Come on up, Larry Bear and SF Giant mascot, Lucille. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. We were really on top of our game. We would have had a logo for each of the events this weekend on Lou's. We have the 75th anniversary logo, but we don't have. Just a quick champagne story. One of our broadcasters, Dwayne Kuyper, I think it was a celebration of winning the division in year 2000. I say this for the police chief here, assistant chief. He was driving home after the game, and uh, he had champagne poured all over him throughout the, uh, the post-game celebration, uh, but had not taken a sip at all. He was going kind of slowly, listening to the highlights on the radio as he was driving back home. And he was driving so slowly, he was actually stopped by the police force. And they say, you're going too slowly. And they open the door, and they smell him full of champagne. They say, you reek, buddy. You're going in. And he said, no, I, I promise. People just poured it on me. I was not drinking. I promise. And they said, yeah, right. And he passed the breathalyzer test and uh, walked the line, and he did OK. Um, the, I first want to say I, we really appreciate all the support. These are uh, parts of the city that we work with uh, every day. The port is our landlord. We talk to the mayor and his, and his uh, chiefs all the time. The police department, uh, uh, Joanne Hayes-White, all the time about issues. And uh, we would not be able to bring 41,000 people to the ballpark 81 times a year for 13 years if it wasn't the, through the amazing support. I want to also uh, mention for a moment uh, the just fantastic uh, response by our fans, thanks to the good work of the city, about public transit. Uh, we've prided ourselves through the years, on average, about a 50-50 modal split, meaning that about 50% of our fans come some way other than driving. And we'd love to see this weekend that even increase. And so we urge our fans to, uh, to even uh, more than ever consider public transit. Uh, they've been great about it in the, in the 13 years we've been playing downtown. And so uh, if, that can, if that can happen, that would be great. We also I'm getting a lot of questions about game times. So we have Saturday and Sunday, and we don't know who we're playing. And we don't know all the, all the uh, gyrations yet of, of who is in the playoffs on both the National and American League, which will have some bearing on because the, the television networks make, a, make decisions on game times. But um, I think there's a chance we'll have late afternoon or early evening. And, and that would uh, make us steer clear of the America's Cup, who we have a great partnership with and, and, uh, and fully support, obviously, Fleet Week. Hardly Strictly Bluegrass, who I echo the, the mayor's uh, comments about Warren Hellman, who actually, um, back in 1993, was an integral part of keeping the Giants in San Francisco. So uh, we'll let you know on game time soon, but um, maybe cross our fingers. It sounds like for the city, late afternoon could work well, and uh, late afternoon, early evening. So we'll see if that's a, a Saturday game time or not. Thank you very much. We look forward to working with you. And uh, Lou, do you have anything to say? Okay, he's a little choked up. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Thank you, Larry. Well, we know as in sports, it's really all about momentum. So I'm still watching, Larry. Beat L.A., okay? Because it, it is about momentum, and we, we want that coming in here strong. And talking about momentum, if you saw the dominance of our Niners this past weekend, uh, you'll know that they're coming back and they want to make a good showing. So here to talk about this uh, weekend's game with Buffalo Bills, but also again about fan safety, about the way we get around the city, and hopefully we get 70,000 fans also at the 49er game. Vice President of Stadium Operations and Security, Jim Mercurio, along with Sourdough Sam and our 49er cheerleaders. Come on up.
Well, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, city staff. I just wanted to, on behalf of Jed York and Denise and John uh, the Bartolo of York, that uh, we have all the confidence in the world in the city and county of San Francisco, and certainly you, Mayor Lee, and the city staff. As we bring over 60, 65,000 people to the city on Sunday, we've done uh, a bunch of outreach to our fans and certainly to uh, our public that have come to Candlestick Park to ensure that uh, you come early, you come safe, you take public transit. If you can't take public transit, we do ask that you do carpool. Uh, it, it, it does make a difference. So uh, on behalf of the San Francisco 49ers, we're welcome to, to uh, and appreciate being here, and we hope we can uh, return to dominance this weekend like we did last. Thank you very much. All right, go Niners. Well, we have a star-studded uh, group of uh, performers that are coming in for Harley Stickley Bluegrass and you know it really is as we said earlier it's a fantastic gift that Warren Hellman gave us we're cherishing that and here to speak about uh, the preparatory work that he has been working not only for the event itself but also in collaboration with all the agencies stand behind me and that's Phil Ginsburg our director of Rec and Park Hi, everybody. I am just a uh, kid in a candy store for this weekend. I don't know where I'm going to be, but I'm going to be everywhere. Um, I have the great pleasure of talking about Harley Strictly Bluegrass. Uh, the folks associated with the event are actually setting it up as we speak. So somewhere right now, Warren Hellman is smiling and warming up on his banjo. Um, it is going to be a tremendous event. It kicks off Friday at noon, where Harley Strictly welcomes San Francisco Unified School District's kids uh, out to a special concert at noon and continues Friday, Saturday, and Sunday with headliners Elvis Costello, Robert Earl Keane, and Emmy Lou Harris, and it's gonna be tremendous. And if Warren were here, he would um, say to all of the other event uh, folks that are putting on events today that he apologizes for any underwhelming attendance you might have because everyone will be in Golden Gate Park listening to, uh, to Emmy Lou at all. It's gonna be a great event. I wanna thank uh, the mayor, uh, Ann Cronenberg, uh, Chief Sir, uh, the Department of Emergency Management. This has really been a uh, interagency success. There's been a ton of coordination and planning. Our parks will be busy because in addition to Harley Strictly and a boat race we're hosting on Little, Magri Little Marina Green and an air show we're hosting on Big Marina Green and a football game we're hosting at Candlestick, we also have uh, thousands of youth soccer players and their parents uh, and picnickers at our 220 parks all around the city. So it will be busy, but it will be joyous and fun. We ask people for a little bit of patience and we ask people to take care of our parks. Uh, there's going to be a lot of impact on our parks this weekend, and uh, we strive for a 100% diversion rate at Hardly Strictly, meaning we pick up every single piece of trash recycling and we compost, uh, but would ask people to treat our parks with uh, respect, have a little bit of patience, and have fun. Thank you. Thank you, and I know that's why uh, Hydra Mendoza was here on behalf of the school board. Uh, she knows uh, how much... Uh, uh, Warren has been uh, using uh, that Bluegrass Festival to help our youth. Our neighborhoods are also getting activated this weekend. The Castro Street Fair, our Executive Director George Ridgely is here to tell us more about what we can expect from this great street fair that's been part of our wonderful city history. Come on up, George. Thank you, Mayor Lee. Um, it is an honor to be here today among all of the representatives from these world-class events. Um, I think it's safe to say if you can't find something fun to do in San Francisco this weekend, it isn't because we didn't try. Um, the 39th consecutive uh, Castro Street Fair is this coming Sunday. The fair was founded by Harvey Milk and the local merchants back in 1974. I think that makes us maybe the oldest event here today. Um, we have two stages of live entertainment, two dance areas. Um, we feature local bands on all of our stages uh, and local DJs in the dance areas. Um, yearly, we raise close or upwards of $75,000 that are given back to uh, local charities. And we could not do that without the support of the city, um, the support of the local Castro community, and well over 600 volunteers that come out on event day to help us. So. Um, we hope that you enjoy the weekend and that you can stop by the fair and um, check us out as well. Thank you. All right. 
and on Sunday, October 7th, San Francisco 144th Annual Italian Heritage Month Parade begins. It goes from Fisherman's Wharf all the way to North Beach. For me, it's a question of which hat do I wear on what blocks. Uh, but here, to talk about the Italian Heritage Parade, which I've had the privilege of walking in, and I'll continue doing that, is the president of the organization, John Parente. Come on up, John. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, we have the distinction of uh, hosting the oldest civic parade in San Francisco, and it's also the oldest Italian-American parade in the nation. Uh, we welcome everybody, and uh, we have a tradition now where it used to be the mayor would ride in a car, and the police chief would ride in a car, and the fire chief would ride in a car, and now they all walk, and it's a, it's a wonderful thing. They, they meet with the people. Also, you heard earlier about the Marine Band and the Navy Band. If you miss any of the venues, you can come out and hear them in our parade. Both will be marching in our parade along with units. We have been fortunate to uh, partner with Fleet Week, uh, so there's a, a great military presence in our parade. However, we have uh, Bay Area organizations from all over. We have some people coming down as far as Washington State marching in our parade. It's just a wonderful family time. We have a car show in Washington Park with uh, Ferraris, so just enjoy your day. Hope you stop by the parade and enjoy San Francisco. Thank you. Well, San Francisco now and always will be a city that welcomes and salutes our men and women in uniform, our international visitors, people of all colors and walks of life, and we want to celebrate our great diversity and our diverse neighborhoods with events all across our city. There is something for everyone and more than one, for sure. We are a world-class city. So with all of these events, we say have fun, be safe, have an exciting week and weekend, enjoy all the great events in the best city in America. Thank you, everyone, for coming here and working together with us.